For this video, we'll be taking the kit apart for painting and lettering. So the first thing you'll want to do when disassembling is to take off that screw where the wire is connected if your model has the wire connected directly to the tinder like this. And then take off the screw holding the drawbar. So that frees up the tinder. And now remove the boiler and any other parts that are necessary to do that. And lift the mechanism out carefully. And with the boiler off, I'm also going to remove these handrails. This will make masking the model easier when it's time to paint it. Just gently pull each one out, a little at a time, until the whole railing is free. So that's all the disassembly for the boiler on this one. I'll leave the cab back plate on. Now remove the motor. It's two screws for this one, one in front and one in back. And remove the drawbar. Now to remove the wheels, I'm going to leave them connected to all the side rods and valve gear and everything, so the first thing I'll do instead is disconnect the valve gear from the valve gear hanger. This way the valve gear hanger can be painted with the chassis. Now remove the bottom plate. Gently lift the wheels out. And carefully free them from the rest of it. And those rods drop out from the hanger just like that. So the wheels are now free, and the last thing to take apart will be the tinder. Let's take both the trucks off. I'll also remove the whole frame here, although sometimes you can leave that on and just paint it with the body. But if you remove it, sometimes it's easier to paint in a few of the harder to reach areas, like inside of here. Sometimes an airbrush or spray can will have difficulty reaching those areas. Now with the disassembly done, it can be taken to the sink for cleaning. And before painting, the model has to be prepared. And there are multiple ways to do this. There are some who like to use uh, vinegar, uh, let it soak in there for a while, and it'll uh, basically just uh, clean off any grime that's on there and even lightly etch the surface to help the paint bond. I've even heard of some who use uh, light sandblasting to clean up their models. But as for me, I like to use soft scrub with a toothbrush and water. Soft scrub is just very lightly abrasive, so it's good for cleaning. So I just put a bit on the toothbrush like that, a little bit of water, I use warm water, and then wet the part to be cleaned a bit. Then just carefully go at it, 
making sure to scrub every part of the model. You don't want to leave any dirt or oil behind because that can affect the paint adhesion. I'll even scrub the inside a bit just to be sure that there are no problems there. And then rinse the model off. Sometimes you can even, while rinsing the model, you can even use the toothbrush to help scrub any leftovers off of there. And then do the same for the rest of the parts that will need to be painted. These are all the parts that I'll be spray painting on this model. They just need to dry thoroughly beforehand. I'm just going to let these air dry, but speed things up. You could also use a hair dryer or even a convection oven on a lower temperature. And now with the parts cleaned, we can get on to painting. So for this, I'm going to start with the graphite color on the front of the boiler. This here is a blend I've made using Scale Coat 2 Silver and Black. So I'll just uh, pour a little bit into the bottle there. And for this, not much paint is needed, so I'm only partially filling the bottle. And of course, this needs to be thinned in order to work correctly with the airbrush. So to do that, I'm using some Testers Enamel Thinner. Depending on the paint you use, it could also require water or lacquer thinner or alcohol. Just uh, whatever's written on the paint bottle, that's what you should go with. Now for these enamel scale coat paints, I usually like to thin them so that it's about um, between one quarter and one third thinner. So I'll give this just a little bit more. That should be good. And now I'll just uh, stir that up. Or you can also cap the bottle and shake the paint. That also works really well. We should have a nice thin consistency. About like uh, maybe whole milk would be a good example. Now put the cap onto the bottle. And this should be all ready to use. When doing spray painting or airbrushing, you'll want to do it in an open, well-ventilated area such as a garage. Right now I'm in my attic since it's a nice big open space. So here's the boiler. I've got it on a you know, just an old paper towel roll there. Seems to work well for holding on to it, so that'll allow me to kind of move around and make sure I've got a good coating around the front. And there's my new airbrush. This will actually be my first time using this one, so I'm just going to do some flow adjustment here real quick and make sure it's working correctly before I start. That looks pretty good. So now that I've got that adjusted, I'll get started. And I'm actually not doing any masking for the first part because I found I can actually get a cleaner line when I allow some overspray with the initial color. So, let's go at that a little at a time. You may also notice that I'm not using primer here. I found that for some of the high quality paints, like this uh, scale coat that I use, primer is actually not always necessary. As long as you have a good opaque coating, um, the primer really isn't needed. There, that should be good for the front. So I'll give that about a day to dry since this is enamel. And then I'll mask that for preparation for the next color. And now with the first color done, we can get on to some masking. So there are plenty of special masking tapes out there for modeling use that are very fine, high quality, and get you excellent results. But for more basic projects like this one, 
I usually just go to the standard blue painter's masking tape. This stuff releases from paint easily and leaves some pretty sharp lines. And it's inexpensive, so it's good for projects like these. So you just uh, find out how much you need for a certain area and trim off little pieces with scissors. And then you can be stuck as close as possible to where you want the lines to separate. So right here, I'm putting it right where the smoke box beats the walkway and just at the end of the boiler band going underneath. So on this model, I'll only be masking off this front area to keep it simple. The frames are going to be all black, but I do still want to mask off any areas where there will be electrical contact. So for the tinder frame here, I'll just mask off the bottom of each of these bolsters using a small piece of tape. Well, I may need a little more than that just to make sure it's fully covered. And then for the frame here, I'll mask off each of these slots just by wrapping a piece of tape around and I'll mask off the um, crosshead guides. The rest will be painted. So that takes care of the masking on here. When you're finishing, you just wanna make sure all the edges are pressed down firmly and that there are no leaks around any parts of the paper where paint might be able to spray through. And this looks like it should be good enough. I've also got it on the frames for both the engine and tender. And that looks like it should be fine. So now I can get started with the actual painting. So some of the parts I have laid out on the paper, I'll do one side of them and then flip them over, do the other side. I'll place them onto a piece of track or something like this just to make sure they're not all the way down on the paper. As for the main bodies, I'm using these uh, paper towel rolls to hold on to them just to make things a little easier. So just uh, gently go across that, a light coat at a time, until it's fully painted. Alright, so that's pretty full coverage already, but there are usually just a few thin areas with the first coat, so after that's had maybe an hour to set, I'll give that a second coat to make sure that it's uh, got nice full coverage. Applying the second coat is just like doing the first one, except it can typically be a bit lighter. So once again, just do full coverage to make sure you've got a nice smooth coat. And as you go along, you may find that there are some places where you just can't quite reach with the airbrush. But that's nothing to worry about. You can just use the thin paint later on to touch up those spots and it will look perfectly fine. And I think that'll do it. The paint looks a lot more opaque now. So I'll just give that another day or so to dry. And then I can take off the masking tape and get to putting the lettering on. For any parts that weren't airbrushed, they can instead be brush painted using the same paint. And by using the thinned paint, you can get a similar finish to the actual spray painted parts. Since the paint is thinned, it's less likely to show brush strokes, which is very helpful. It may take a couple coats to get full coverage though since the paint is, of course, thinner. Now for parts like the handrails that cross over two colors on the body, it helps to paint them off of the body because you can more easily get full coverage of the parts without the risk of ruining any of the paint that you just sprayed onto there. The thinned paint is also very useful for touching up any areas that may not have gotten good coverage from the spray paint. Right here under the running boards and under some of these details are common areas where paint doesn't get to very easily. 
So I'll just go in there with some of the thinned paint, carefully touch that up, and that should look real good once it's finished. Now with the paint finished, the masking tape can be peeled off from the model. Just do this carefully, one piece at a time. And any tape that was put on for electrical purposes can be left on until the final clear coat is in place. See how the lines turned out. And it looks like we got good separation between the colors. Just needs a small amount of touch up in there. With the paint touch-ups finished, now I'm just putting on the last of these detail parts. So I've already got the marker lights on, as well as the bell. I still have to glue on the handrails and the um, whistle and pop valves. So I'm just going to line that up one stanchion at a time, very carefully. And now with the handrails on, I just have these few small brass parts left. So just another dot of glue there. Put down into the hole. And do the same thing for the rest of them. And that takes care of that. So now, all that's left is the lettering and finishing coat. Now for the lettering, I've decided to use Southern Pacific decals on here. So there's no specific prototype for this steam engine. It was kind of a freelance thing by Varney, although they did loosely base the boiler off of a Southern Pacific prototype. So I guess that would be about the closest thing to go with, although it could technically match up somewhat to other railroads too. So first I'll just cut out what I need. So I'll take scissors to do that. Just use the, for these really bright decals, you can just uh, shine it under light and follow the reflections to know where you're cutting. Go around there. And let's see numbers I need are right up here. So this will be number 889, which I believe was a C24 or C25 consolidation on the Southern Pacific. And this model looks vaguely like one of those, so it should be all right. Just split that in half. These two are ready to go. And then the other decals will be these small font Southern Pacific lines for the tender. I could probably go more in depth on some of the finer decals like a uh, um, tender water um, fuel ratings. But for this one, I'm just gonna go simple do the rail name and the numbers. So to apply the decals, I filled a tray with warm water and I have a decal soaking in there now. And when the water is warm and the decal is fresh, it only needs maybe 30, 40 seconds when it's in warm water. Sometimes up to a minute for really large ones. It's been in there for about Maybe half that time so far. Needs just a few more seconds. And sometimes moving it around in the water can help to move some air bubbles away and help it to soak more quickly. Oh yeah, that's already sliding easily. So, now I'll just uh, line that up where I want it on the tinder. And very gently slide the paper away. And this isn't quite centered, so I'll just get a little water on my finger and spread it on there. There, that makes it easier to move. Move this down.
just slightly. I'm going to be very gentle when handling fine decals like these because they are easily damaged. But once you have things right in place and where you want them, then you can either leave it alone to air dry, or you can take a paper towel and just gently touch it to get rid of some of the major water. And that looks good on there, so I'll just give that another couple minutes to dry out a little more before putting setting solution on. In the meantime, I'll go ahead and start on the engine's numbers. So I'll just drop that decal in there and get it soaking. Get that number lined up. And from the photos I've seen, the Southern Pacific usually had the numbers pretty much centered under the windows. So right there should be good. I think that other decal is about ready now. So I'll pull out the setting solution. I'm using Microscale's Microsol. So I'll just put a bit of that onto a paintbrush, soft paintbrush, and carefully Spread that over the whole decal. As the setting solution soaks in, it will soften the decal and cause it to completely form over all the rivet details here, as well as getting rid of most of the air bubbles. And if there are any air bubbles left underneath, then they can be, well, once the decal is dry and hardened, they can be popped and then more of the solution can be applied. Now that the first setting is done and the decals are dry, I can see there are a few small spots here and there where there are some bubbles, like mainly around here, these areas. So, with the decals dry, what I like to do is take just a fine drill bit, like this one here, just kind of poke some holes around there. Sometimes you can twist the drill bit a little bit just to cut in a little more if needed. And now, with some holes poked in there, take a bit more setting solution, apply it to the problem areas, and then give that some time to set again. And if you still find there are any bubbles around there, just do the same thing over. Pop the bubbles, apply a bit more setting solution. All right, so it looks like that second time with this setting solution did it, and this is now ready for the final clear coat. So for that, I've already got it in the bottle here, but this is Microscale's Micro Satin Finish. It gives it a nice, um, not quite glossy clear coat. And then another good option if you want a flat finish is Tester's Dull Coat, which, which is available like this or in a spray can. So when spraying on the clear coat, all you need is a nice thin coat to go over the whole thing. Usually you can get the whole model in just one shot. Now these clear coats typically dry pretty fast on their own, but if you really want to speed things up, you can take a hair dryer to it. And with this, the coating will be dry in seconds. And there are all the finished parts together. So for the next video, we'll be doing the final assembly of the model.